Well, we're officially broken down now. Uh, luckily, I have been experimenting with ignition parts and I got this Saab 99 condenser from Napa. So I just threw this thing in. <laughs> I pretty much have to leave in the next five minutes. Till then, we have a file, we have gumption, and we have fuel in the tank. Let's go. Oh boy. So we got the sauna back in the garage, and we're gonna check out the ignition condenser today. We're going to learn out how to test one and see if it's bad. And then if it is bad, we're going to replace it. But I can't replace it because no one makes them anymore. So we're going to make a custom one. Now we can see in here we have our points. And then our condenser on this distributor is mounted on the side. Sometimes they're mounted inside the distributor. Either way, it's the same exact thing. We're going to take this thing off and test it outside the car. An ignition condenser is just a capacitor and it absorbs the electrical energy from your points when the points open and break that contact. So what we do to test these is a technique that I found on YouTube under Dave Kennedy 52 and I'll put that link in the description. So right here we have a brand new condenser from Napa. It's an Eklund brand condenser for a um, Saab 99. We're going to test this first and then we'll compare against a new old stock condenser and, and the new old stock condenser I had in the car. Got the multimeter here. We're gonna put it to 20M on ohms, and that is measuring resistance. Now we see one when there's nothing happening, and then touch them together, we get zero. So we're confirming that that's, that's uh, working. Now we wanna take our black contact and put it on one of these contacts here, and then we'll put our red one on the body of the condenser. What we wanna see is the numbers come up slowly in here and then stop at the high value. And if we have just a high value come up, then we know that the condenser is bad. So this is the known new condenser. 4, 14, 16, 18. So that works properly. We're going to put this aside and hold on to it. We've got a new old stock condenser from eBay. And this is probably very old. It's a, a Bosch unit. We're going to try this one now. This one seems to work much slower, but it still is working. Then we have our ignition condenser that is correct for this distributor. It's actually for a Volvo 164, which um, doesn't show up in the Saab uh, Sonnet ignition condenser list of, of, I mean, they used over 10 condensers and it's kind of ridiculous, but we're gonna try this one. This one's been on the car and the car does not run well. Yep, see that? It flashed directly to 19 ohms. So I'm going to here, over here checking this again. This is the capacitor, the uh, one that fits the car. And I'm looking at this, so if we do the black on the contact and the red on the body, that should be the uh, rising numbers up to 20, basically. That kind of did it, and it's very inconsistent on this one. It seems like that charges the capacitor, and if we go backward with the red on the contact and the, and the black on the body, it does, um, behaves the way it should again. And then we switch them around, make sure those don't touch. Switch, switch them around and sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. The first time I did it, it went up to 19 something. Second time it kind of worked and now we tried it off camera and it would jump up and down from what, like two to six to 10 and uh, back again. So I think this one is malfunctioning, probably has an internal short or something. So I marked this one to, to make sure I don't get it confused with the others. I've confirmed two things. One is that when I had a breakdown with the car in a previous episode, I will link that in the description too, and I sw swapped the new Saab 99 condenser in, the car ran perfectly all the way home. But that was not a correct fit, and it would not stay in there very long. The second thing is that 
when I tested the new condenser, that tested well, and the condenser, the new old stock condenser that was actually an old one that I put in, did not test well. It's very inconsistent, and I got differing readings that said that it was good and wasn't good. So I'm going to call that uh, some kind of internal short, and I'm going to combine both condensers into one working one. I know what you're all going to say. You've said it before, and I've heard it on forums and Facebook and whatever. I'm not doing Protronics. There are two reasons for this. Number one reason is that I enjoy the mechanical aspects of a car, and with, when a system breaks, I want to be able to fix it. Protronics is not a fixable thing. It's the proverbial black box where you have to replace the whole box. It's a $100 box, and the second reason is that $100 box does not fit the distributor I got rebuilt. So I'm going with points, and you can talk amongst yourselves, I guess, but uh, that's my decision, and that's what makes me happy in my hobby. And maybe you're in the same boat. Maybe you have a car that you can't get Protronics for. Maybe you have a car that um, Protronics is really expensive. And I think $100 for um, replacing a $10 part is pretty expensive. Let's move on and we'll work on these condensers. You can see our distributor right here. And this hole on the side is why you can't put Protronics on it. The Protronics system interacts with the hole that is notched into the top of the distributor body right here. With this round hole, we actually have a round plug on the condenser, and that interfaces perfectly. This is the new old stock condenser that's supposed to fit the car. And then the hole on the bottom is for the little screw. Pretty easy, not a super complicated thing, but we have our 99 condenser here. It has a mirror opposite bracket that also holds our little plug in. That plug slides right into that bracket. And I have held this up here, Let's see if I can hold it up on camera. Holds up right where it should and it doesn't touch anything. The intake manifold is kind of a minefield of things that stick up and touch things, but this one seems to clear everything the way that bracket holds. And I'm glad for that because I did not want to move the, one of these brackets over. We've confirmed the bracket should work. The new condenser has a square peg for the proverbial and literal round hole. So we are going to move the round peg over so that it'll fit in the round condenser and the round hole. So I'm going to cut this one off near the plug. And now we have a bad condenser and a bad wire we're going to get rid of. Now we have a good condenser and a good wire. All I need to do is line this up into the hole. That's the way it's supposed to be. And then I need to connect these two wires to make one. That'll be our new condenser. All right, well, that's on there. It looks uh, lumpy to me, but I think that's better than skimpy. Let's see if this will Pull up here, nope, because it's already, oh no. Since my heat shrink shrank when I soldered it, I'm gonna throw some liquid electrical tape on and hopefully that'll be good enough. Do not touch, do not smell, do not look at, okay. It does smell like testers modeling glue. Okay, let's test this one more time, make sure it's going to work. What are you doing? Kind of works, I don't know. Nice, I think that should... Uh should work for us. Got my condenser on the side. I got my plug in. Plug is hooked up here. The other lead is hooked up to the coil over there. Let's put that rotor on, cap on, and we will try to get this thing to start up.
I gotta get out of here, but we'll pick this up later. The choke wants to keep open because it's a crappy carb and I might get a new one, but with the choke closed, let's see if we can start it now. I don't know if it'll help. screwdriver fell up what'd you do so i lost the screwdriver that i was using to hold the choke open but it started this time so i'm going to i don't even know i was really hoping to get this thing uh, running and and driving but it doesn't look like that's going to happen right now so what i'll probably do is i'm going to wrap this video up and you all have seen what i've done to this thing And I'm hoping that someone can give me uh, a thought of what you think it is. As a fitting end to this episode, I got home on a Friday night and I figured I'd um, screw around with the sonnet before I went and ordered a new carburetor. And wouldn't you know it.
Okay, that is an extremely embarrassing end to this episode. I already filmed an outro to this and I was about to buy a new carburetor. It runs so well. I still have some fine tuning to do. I think I might buy a color tune to uh, look at the combustion flame directly and be able to really dial that in with the right color. But I'm gonna drive this thing to work tomorrow. I'm working on Saturday, of course. Um, but holy crap, I can't believe I went through all that effort. And a lot of it was, was worth it and a lot of it I needed to do anyway. But I went through all that effort when all I needed to do was figure out how to put, hook up the time and light. And for the record, the way I hooked up the time and light before was I put the red clip on the starter solenoid, the input to that. And of course, um, that might not get power unless you're cranking. So it wasn't running the timing light correctly. This time I hooked up the red to the alternator like a normal human would. Um, but there you go. So as you can probably tell from my videos, I have been learning a lot. And this project was my first project where I took a car that didn't run and made it run. So I'm bound to make mistakes. This is a really embarrassing one, but you get it all. So I am so glad this thing is running and thank you for watching Duluth Junction Workshop. Press on.